Hello everyone. Welcome back to Active Learning. It is known since the time of Archimedes that a circle with radius r has an area of pi r square square units and a circumference of 2 pi r units. Hundreds of other curves have been studied since then and finding the area under these curves have remained a subject of interest for mathematicians throughout history. Starting with Archimedes who found the area under a parabolic segment, the area bounded by many other curves such as the cycloid hyperbola and other algebraic curves followed even before the invention of calculus but here's an interesting question what about the arc length of a curve the length of a circular arc was known since ancient times if you had to take a wild guess as to the next curve whose arc length was computed what curve would that be any of the other conics maybe the algebraic curves as you think about it here is a nice comment by rene descartes regarding this question In this short video series we are going to see three curves which hold a special place in math as the first few curves to be rectified even more amazing is the fact that this was achieved without any calculus nevertheless these incorporated many of the ideas of calculus that were to be later formalized by newton and leibniz the first curve after the circle whose arc length was computed precisely was the logarithmic spiral evangelist atariselli who already gave an appearance in our channel made this remarkable discovery during the mid 17th century a logarithmic spiral is a curve traced by a point moving along a straight line such that its velocity is directly proportional to its distance from the origin while the straight line itself is rotating with a uniform angular velocity the curve so described has many fascinating properties that it appears frequently in nature to keep this discussion short we focus on one property that will be useful to us a line that connects a point on the spiral and the origin is called the radial line the logarithmic spiral has a special property that the angle between this radial line at any point and its tangent remains a constant to see why this is true it is obvious that a point moving along a curve at any given instant will be moving along the tangent instantaneously This tangential velocity has two components. The velocity along the radial line which is directly proportional to its center from the origin by definition. But as the point is also moving along a rotating straight line there is also a component of velocity perpendicular to the line with magnitude r omega where omega is the angular velocity of the line. The overall velocity of the point which will be along the tangent to the curve is the sum of these two velocity vectors. specifically the angle between the tangent and the radial line is given by the ratio r omega divided by r k because the r's cancel out and what remains is essentially a constant we know that the angle stays constant independent of the point chosen as a consequence the curve remains rotationally invariant that is no matter how much we rotate the curve above the origin we get the same curve just in a different scale for specific rotation angles we even get the same curve again rotation is the same as scaling for logarithmic spirals let's take the point where the spiral meets the x axis we are now going to find the length of the curve from this point spiraling inwards to the origin as we move along the spiral the tangent moves around the origin still making a constant angle with the respective radial lines but Let's make a shift in perspective. Rather than making the tangent line move keeping the spiral fixed, we can achieve the same effect by fixing the tangent line and moving the rest of the plane along the line. That is, we are keeping the line fixed and rolling out the spiral along this line. As the spiral unrolls on the tangent line, the radial line moves parallel to its initial orientation at all times because it makes a constant angle with the tangent. At each instant the spiral will be instantaneously rotating about the tangent point. That means at any given instant the tangent point will act as the center of rotation and any point on the spiral will be moving in a direction perpendicular to the line joining it to the tangent point. Specifically the pole or the origin of the curve will move perpendicular to the radial line. As the radial line at all times makes the same angle with the tangent the pole continues to move in the perpendicular direction 
after the curve has rolled a certain distance we know that the distance through which it has rolled equals the arc length between the two points also from the geometry of the problem we get this right angled triangle with one side equal to the difference between the two radial lines and another side equal to the arc length of the spiral because we know the angle between the radial line and the tangent we finally see that the arc length between these two points equals the difference between the radial lengths divided by the cosine of the angle alpha in the special case where the second point is at the origin the total length of the spiral becomes the length of the radial line divided by the cosine of the angle geometrically this equals the segment of the tangent line from the point of tangent c to the point where the tangent meets the y axis somewhat paradoxically though it may take an infinite amount of time for the spiral to roll itself on the tangent line completely its length remains finite galileo said of this result who is so blind as to not see that if there are two equal straight lines one of which is then bent into a curve that curve will be equal to the straight line hope you enjoyed the discussion see you in the next video